It's been a long time coming for this guy. I've dropped a few sneak little hints on this coming up, but this has been my favorite build and probably one of the coolest liveries I've ever owned and maybe Cannondale's ever made. Even cooler than the Trek USPS bikes and came before that, if you believe it or not. Welcome to my 2000 Cannondale R1000. This is a Stars and Stripes livery. Let's this get into it. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. This USA livery looks absolutely sick. I can't believe how cool it is. By far my favorite livery I've ever seen on a bike, but it actually is even cooler because not only did, as I mentioned, it came before the 2002 and 2003 Trek USPS, very infamous liveries because of the whole Armstrong thing. They're still pretty sought after too. These are even cooler than that. They came before that and they actually have a way cooler origin story dating back to the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Cannondale was debuting a pretty cool little livery, not anywhere near as intricate as this, but it's where it started. It was a Volvo mountain bike ridden by Tinker Juarez. This was going to be front half was red, the middle white and the rear blue. So red, white and blue livery. That was their Team USA. They didn't actually get the chance to debut it. For some reason, Tinker rode something else. I was trying to find original pictures of what the bike was supposed to look like. I can't find them. Maybe the bike wasn't ready. Who knows? But I do know if you go to 1997, they did sell a team replica, and that is the one where it has Volvo on it and this exact scheme I showed you here in the picture you could see. And that is what starts this. They bring it back for this CAD 4 frame in the year 2000. It's actually so popular. They do it a few years later during the Trek USPS days on a CAD 5 frame. Not quite as good, I'm going to be honest. Uh, something about this Stars and Stripes livery that, that is just so awesome to me. And it's just so well done. They actually, in 2016, 2017, somewhere around here, Cannondale actually does a CAD 12 that looks absolutely sick. It was just a one-off for display, though. You can see that here. Very nice. They also did a, for the Tour de France, one of their American riders on July 4th rode a very sick time trial version. Both of those cooler than this. But technology has changed in a lot since then. So I think that this one to this day is the best because it's not just a one off. You know, they had some pro do. This is a real factory livery that you could order out of the catalog. And I'll even show you a picture here. Looks very cool in the catalog. I got a little lucky when I first got this. It had given me a little idea of where to go. Originally, you would not get this Selly Italia blue saddle, which actually kind of surprisingly comes on the Trek USPS ones. I had a 5200 that was all blue and it came with a blue one just like this. It wasn't a USPS, but it was very much colorized and liveried up to match up nice and well. And this is a really, really nice, comfortable saddle. It's a super huge bummer I can't use this. Uh, this one's just shot. I mean, there is no, there's no rigidness to the saddle at all. There's, a, I guess, like a carbon kind of shell to it and it's just flat worn out. So... I have gone ahead and I put on something to match the livery, a physique red and white saddle, which I think matches it a little better by, you know, our stripes and all of that in the red and the white. Had to go to head stick with the cool looks of the livery. So go around and that's the first thing I want to touch on. So we'll do some quick little of my favorite things here and there. Uh, front and rear brakes. I always love to upgrade to some nice cartridge style, which I could put nice new pads in, which I have. For the rears, I have red brake pads. 
And for the fronts, I have blue brake pads, you can see, kind of go with the flow. I think it looks awesome. You can see here, I changed out our seat post clamp. Of course, I wanted to put a red one on there. Uh, so this came on a bike I got a long time ago, that physique uh, little seat collar to kind of mark where your saddle's at. So I don't know, I figured it kind of matched pretty neatly on there. For our bar ends, I have some very cool Soma American flag bar ends, match it again perfectly. And my favorite bit up top is a Captain America shield for my top cap, which is pretty sweet for your headset pressure and all of that. I think it looks very, very cool. Basically just matches the complete flow. And to top it all off, I went ahead and put little cable ends in identical color schemes. For our rear derailleur and rear brake, I have little red ends on it. And for our front brake and front derailleur, I have little blue ends on it. So I am very, very pleased. This has been quite a long build in sourcing little bits and bobs that I've really wanted to. I haven't made a ton of changes on it as like a complete drivetrain and all of that yet, because uh, I think what it has is pretty good, but I am extremely pleased with where we're at. So let's get on to the frame. We have, we have here is a CAD4 Cannondale. Now, one of my favorite bikes because this is literally the, the blueprint of all of Cannondale's future success, all of their future like go fast, be light mods. It really starts with this. And you could tell just from the beginning to end when you, uh, you could even, I actually overlay this. One of my first bikes that I really did a frame up build, custom build was a Cannondale CAD 8 R1000, just like this one actually, obviously slightly newer, but the CAD 8 and the CAD 4, you overlay them. And in, and I'll show you in this picture here, it's extremely similar. It's kind of shocking being so far apart, but that's when you really start to realize there's not that much differences as you get from four to eight. For example, the CAD 5, the only difference that you have between the CAD 4 and the CAD 5 is they've switched from a one inch threadless fork to a one and one eighth. And I am almost positive, I could be wrong here, they also have added an integrated headset, which to be honest, I don't really care if there's little headset cups poking in and out. And to be even more honest, it's kind of cool because if you want to add a little bit more eye candy, you could get a pretty sick Chris King headset on there in red or blue of your choice to really spice up the livery a little bit more. So I'm not mad at that. I'm extremely pleased with it. The one inch fork, not really, uh, if you're going to replace a fork, you can find a one inch just about as easily as you can find a one and one eighth. I like the blue on there, so I'm not going to change it at all. I'm very pleased with it all. This is also, speaking of the fork, this is Cannondale's Coda Slice. They have just changed it to Slice in the later years, but they have used this exact carbon fork for many years to come, and it's actually great. They changed it later on towards like the Cat 8, where, as I mentioned, it is integrated, and it is also fully carbon, meaning the steer is carbon as well. Big bonus, but something you could always get if you want to upgrade later in a 1-inch fork. Some big, big bonuses on this Cat 4, and man, I've already put a few hundred miles on this. It's nice and warm. I'm getting back riding again. So it's comfort. That's especially if you're you're like me, you're trying to get back in shape. You want something that doesn't beat you to death. This is the older notorious Cannondale frames say, you know, crack and fail, break your teeth stiff. You know, they have all these stupid internet memes clowning on them. And this is not that. This has come a million miles from those earlier Cannondales. And you could just look at things like we have the hourglass seat stays. They come out a little bit here. And then they curve back in and flare back out to the dropouts. This is going to give you a longer seat stay, which we already know from the CAD 3 design and the CAD 2. They've learned lengthening the seat stay. It makes you much more comfortable on your rides, but it also gives a much more compliant stiff ride. So we do have the ability to keep the stiffness and keep performance like we want, as well as having the ability to have a comfortable ride. For our down tube, we have what Canada's notorious for their huge power pyramid, which for the power pyramid design, it is from the head tube all the way sloping down to the bottom bracket. And this is where their really famous design comes out because this is super small in diameter and normal size at the head tube. And it flares out to a massive diameter by the time it reaches the bottom bracket. Not only is this a very cool design that they've improved with the power pyramid in the cat three, but They've also tapered it, which is, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, triple butted and double, tube, double tapered tubing, 
all of this stuff isn't just fancy words for nice tubing. It is also high end stuff and it takes a lot more work to design. So they're putting a lot more money into something that you're going to get not just a, a more ride that's compliant and more comfortable, but it is going to be a lot lighter because of stuff like this. So tapering also makes it stronger. It is going to be extremely durable. So now we have this cool taper that flares out. It is super strong. It is super lightweight. And honestly, it gives Cannondale that cool look they've had forever. Everybody loves the oversized tubing on the Cannondale. The head tube is butted and, and it's hard to tell, but it is a little bulbous looking around the cable area. That big bonus, you don't have to worry about anything, as I mentioned, super durable. And we'll move on over here to the chain stays. These are swage. This is another design that they have moved on and improved in the coming years with Cannondale's more future designs that are more modern and newer. But this is again, the blueprint to success here. You have their thin and tall at the end, and then they kind of square out the swage is like a weird term that they have for the tubing. And it is a weird shape that gives you a really stiff and strong design. A lot of this is really dampening too. When I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big boy and man, when you're riding as a heavier rider, you can feel everything in the road. Um, I tried to ride an airborne titanium bike I built up recently, a little too small for me. The titanium is amazing how much it soaks it up. And this is not that far behind. I'm going to tell you that. And that is the honest truth for being a, you know, a stiff aluminum frame. It rides like a dream. And I've topped that off by adding some 28 C's on top of that. The only complaint I have about this frame, and this really goes all the way up to like the cat eights. This is it just, Cannondales are tight on 28C tires. I have upgraded the front and rears to 28C. If you try to go a little budget, like I did, uh, I got some Continental GP4000s, I believe they're called, Ultra Sport 2s. They are tight, tight, tight up here by the brake bridge. A little too tight for my liking. You should have like three to four millimeters at least in case you get stones or dirt or mud or whatever it may be. You don't want it catching up in there or eating away at your frame. So I have actually fit this, what is this here we have? This is a Surfa Seca. This is actually, I've had some of these before. 700 by 28C, 130 PSI if you're a smaller rider. I ride these around 85, 90 and it is super plush. Can't complain at all. Super pleased with everything. Tons of room on the front for it too. You don't have to worry about, it fits any kind of 28C up there. So big bonuses to have because it would be a little bit of a bummer to not be able to fit 28Cs. My titanium bike, it only fits very few 28Cs, so it's even tighter. So it's kind of a, it's just one of those things from the year 2000. They didn't realize wider tires equal a more comfortable ride, but the frame really does all the work here for you. You don't, you could get away with riding 25Cs, no problem. That's what the bike came with actually, had some brand new 25Cs on there. Still rode really nice. I made a few little upgrades, not just cosmetic, but to also help with the comfortableness of the ride. We have put a carbon fiber seat post on here. What I want to do actually is put one with a slight setback on here. I'm 5'8", and this is a 54, but I do feel a little small. I put a 90 millimeter stem on here, and I thought that might help me bring it a little closer because my arms aren't that long, but I feel a little cramped because I also changed to a zero offset seat post. I will be putting back an offset. It had a slight offset when I got it. So I got rid of that seat post though, cause it was aluminum. Still a really nice one, but obviously you get a little more performance out of a carbon here. One of my favorite things about this too is the Team Seiko. You might see it up there on the top tube. It says Seiko Machina da Cafe. That is just coffee machine in Italian. This is a sponsor that they had for a very long time. If you know Mario Cipollini, this guy was one of their best riders out, obviously multiple time champion, although later also test, I guess everybody's testing positive nowadays. So everybody's on steroids, as Nate Diaz once said. Their team is literally almost the creator of the viral marketing before really internet was a thing or memes or any of this. They have the craziest, and this is kind of why I like, not just why I really like this livery, but it's also kind of like its era. It really went along with the whole Team Seiko theme, how well they did this livery, because these guys have done like the craziest skits and public like outfits. It's it's very cool. Uh, Mario Cipollini has done like a skin suit that was literally just muscles and all of that, like 
You know, like he was actually wearing skin. He's also ridden the Team Seiko with his road bike spinnergies. And they had a USA livery flag on the little spokes here. That was kind of cool to see. Let's see, what else? For one of the Tour de France's, he has dressed as Julius Caesar and had all the Team Seiko teammates like escort him in on a chariot. Uh, the, the list is pretty long. They have always done these like really funny, super outlandish things. And one of them actually, for a video I've done before at Cannondale 613, another very cool frame set that's very ahead of its time. They did legalize my Cannondale because this Cannondale was 6.13 pounds as a 613. That's what it meant. And they were saying legalize it UCI, the cycling body, because I guess like six point something was the legal limit and 6.13 was under that. But it's kind of funny because the Cannondale 613 was not actually 6.13. Only the smaller frames were. So it was just literally a publicity stunt. And... It's all for fun and laughs and, you know, it's just the stuff they've done is it's very, very original and it's cool to see, you know, Mario Cipollini even get in on some of the USA livery stuff too. I really wish it would have put this out because the other Team Seiko one is just they're red and yellow and and not really a big fan of those, to be honest. I know a lot of people love them and I, I don't want to get any hate, Cannondale. Hardcore guys, don't shoot me. I love Cannondales too, but this, this one is just amazing i can't i can't stop talking about how much i love it <laughs> to tell you the truth if i lost both my legs tomorrow i would just hang this thing up on a wall and look at it as an art piece no joke I, it's really it's just very very well done now let's get into the drivetrain right the the bits and bobs what do we got and this is where it's not its strongest of course for you know a sought after collector bike but and i honestly i don't really want to change it because i'm riding i'm getting back into shape it all works. There's no point of taking it all off. And I haven't really ran across a deal on anything yet. So it stays the way it is. I do have a Mavic CXP 23 set of wheels that are awesome. You don't see these in a blue wheel set. And honestly, I've been trying to replace these, but I want to keep it, if I could, a blue wheel set, you know, kind of tradition to the original look. So kind of hit or miss on this, but uh, it is Canada Dakota Expert Hubs. Sealed bearings, you could pop these right out like a skateboard wheel and put in ceramic cartridge bearings. Very, very nice to have such good quality hubs. They're not as heavy as you'd imagine. And these are stainless steel DT Swiss spokes. They're around like 18, 1900 grams, a little, a little less than 2000. So they're all right for what they are. They could be better and there is way to lose, but they, they're perfectly true. So I wanted to leave that where it was. For our shifters, we have some Ultegra 6500 9x2 speed. I've used these in tons of builds, and I really have nothing to complain about. They they were a little clogged up when I got them, but I have a video on how to do that, how to clean out all that old grease and get them shifting like new again. One thing that is very cool, though, up on top of the handlebars you'll notice here, is there is still a working Shimano flight deck computer on there, which is that's pretty surprising to see. Every time you shift it, it will tell you what gear you're in on the right shifter and on the left shifter. Pretty cool. Now, as the rest of the drivetrain for our derailleurs, rear derailleur was just a short cage Shimano Ultegra here. I have changed this out for a long cage. I do, you know, in a hilly area, I do want to be able to climb without any issues. I've put a 11 30 tooth cassette, and you can see that right here. These are excellent upgrades for nine speeds. If you are in a hilly area, it's kind of a secret that these nine speed 6500 rear derailleurs that are long cage. They will fit 1130, no problem. Even though it says 1128 when you look up the, the actual verbiage on its maximum cassette size, it will fit this and run it no problem at all. So it's really nice to have that. I've also changed out our crank set here. We had a original Octolink Ultegra, nothing wrong with that. It did have a 105 bottom bracket. So I ended up pulling that out and putting it in my titanium bike because that only had 105 so i upgraded that stole that from this and then ended up getting a brand new ultegra 6600 series and this is kind of cool being in the gray it's in i like that it's a little darker matches everything a little nicer and it is super lightweight this is holotech 2 so we have a new bottom bracket design in there as well much lighter and because this is a 10 speed crank you can run this easily on a nine speed drivetrain 
but being that it's a slightly thinner chain ring, you will wear it out faster, and it's a brand new crank. I don't want to wear out brand new chain rings, so I bought some 9-speed. These are 8, 9, or 10-speed. If you get some that are CNC laser cut, a lot of these ones somehow are all made to be all three, unlike the Shimano ones that are only 10-speed. So this will not wear out. These are very nice, high quality, as light. The smaller one was as light as the Otegra chain ring, and the big one was slightly lighter, so that was a small bonus to get. They're a little on the expensive side. They're about 30-ish, 40-ish for the big one, about 25 or so, 30 for the small one. But you don't have to worry about any shifting issues, and you don't have to worry about premature failure on your chain or your chain rings. And... When I'm ready to upgrade to 10-speed, I just throw those nice new chain rings right on there and I'm ready to rock. For our front derailleur, we had a Shimano 105 front derailleur. I just popped in a Ultegra, small upgrade, but you know, I want it all to match and look nice. So we also have some Shimano 105 brakes on here. Probably the only thing I would complain about, but that's just, when you get an R1000, it's not the top of the top. So, you know, there's a few little things they, they swap out to make it a little more affordable for you. These still work very good. As I mentioned, I put the new brake pads in there, so they stop really, really well. I'm pleased with that. You know, even if I just start to slowly stop a few rotations, I'll feel it just immediately grabbing when I'm just barely touching it. So I'm pleased with that, but I would like to upgrade them to something pretty neat in the future. I'm not sure, maybe some titanium brakes that are colored that could go with the livery. I, I have a lot of, I would like to do a part two on this all, where it's just all new build stuff. I'd like to add the history and stuff on part one like I have, but I'll get to that later down the road. I want to get the miles in, as I mentioned. Me just getting it on the road was my biggest concern. Since I have the original handlebars on there, one day I would like to upgrade to some flat top carbon ones. That's probably my next move. I already have some brand new bar tape that will go with it when the time comes. And this is very, very cool bar tape. You can see here, it has the whole stars and stripes and all of that, and it would wrap around and just look totally awesome. This is also from Surface, the company that makes the rear wheel here. Uh, I buy a lot of their stuff, pretty good quality stuff. So I'm really pleased with this bar tape, and I'll use that soon. And I also have this really nice two-seek. It is, it's kind of hard to see here, but I'll add an overlay video. It's, it's like a blue, sparkly, I don't know what to call it, it's very, very cool looking paint though. Stem, and it looks very nice. The thing is though, it only fits the larger diameter. This is a 31.8 handlebar clamp, and we have the older original like 28.6. So to deal with that, as I mentioned, I changed the stem. That is a Origin 8 Pro stem. If you have this issue where you're just trying to get your fit on a one inch fork, it is a little difficult to find the threadless one inch fork stems, that's kind of a pain. That one is a 28.6 and one inch. It is only, even being 90 millimeter, it is only 135 grams, super lightweight for what it is. And uh, they're like 30 bucks. So if you don't wanna mess with changing the handlebars and getting a new stem and all this, that's a good way to upgrade right there. But it will be really cool in the future when I have uh, a couple more little goodies to see where we'll be. I have already dropped about half a pound just changing everything out that I've already mentioned, which is pretty good for what it is especially because we gained weight putting on the much wider tires here and a little bit bigger tubes on the inside. So to still drop half pound is good. We're just like 18.9 pounds without the pedals. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And of course, as you know, Gold Chain Mafia, as always, you ain't got a gold chain, you ain't in the gang. Got to put a nice gold chain on there to just, you know, if it's after Olympics build, we got to put the gold medal on there. To top it off, we did just a cheap budget bar wrap by Zram on there. Not my favorite, to tell you the truth, because it's really dumb that it says Zram all over. In the middle here, it's like Zram, 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 Zram. Not really a huge fan of that, but it's under 20 bucks, and it's a really good thick cork tape. So it's good to have stuff like this on a budget. Plus, I actually stuck some cheaper stuff that I never use. It's like some kind of blue and black camo. I stuck that underneath, so I actually have two two bar tapes on there. It's almost like having some really nice gel wraps under there, but for free. <laughs> so that's nice and thick till I can get those nice handlebars one day. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. I thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this build. 
as I mentioned, this is only part one. I really want to go all out here. I wasn't sure. I've actually had this bike since September, so I've been riding it a lot at the end of the last year, getting back into riding now. I wasn't really sure if it was going to fit me or not. I've had really bad luck with getting fit on things, so I'm super excited to get this and get a new build going sometime. In the, maybe the end of the summer I'll do some new cool things. Maybe I'll get some carbon wheels. Who knows? I really, I almost did that around January. We'll have to see. So thanks for watching, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye. If you want to support the channel, please do. You can find us over at Patreon. You can also find us on YouTube memberships where you have two different types and you can support us there. I'd greatly appreciate it if you did. Thanks.